إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah we praise him we seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, none is worthy of our ultimate love and devotion, but Allah the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his slave, and his messenger. At a time of a battle, after the battle, when there were captives of war, and this is a time of chaos, sometimes family members are separated, and when things settle down, they start looking for one another among the captives or among the lost ones, people trying to figure out who did they lose and who is still alive, it's very tough time, very emotional time. The Prophet ﷺ was observing such a scene. And there was a woman. And she was looking among the captives for a baby. And obviously she was looking with the spirit and the love of a, of a mom. She was desperate, looking for her own little baby. And she was looking around and searching so eagerly and keenly. There her baby lies somewhere. She goes and holds her own baby. And she, she, she hugs the baby so warmly with the motherly love and starts breastfeeding that infant. The scene captured the attention of the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions. What does the Messenger Sallallahu say? He says to the companions, since this is such a deep moment, it sort of awakened them. It sort of, it caught their attention and it made them think. They were all mesmerized by the beauty, by the mercy that this mother had for her child. It touches the heart of every human being. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Would you ever think that a woman like that would throw her baby in the fire? Would a woman with all that love and all that mercy towards her child, this natural thing that Allah built in her. Does it really, can, can even a mind even think of or even, even imagine, imagine that a woman like that would throw the one that she loves the most in her life, this, this is her baby, the little baby, in the fire? The companions of Allah said, La. The Messenger وسلم, said, Lallahu arhamu bi ibadihi min hadihi bi waladiha. Indeed, Allah is more merciful to his servants than this woman is merciful to her own baby. 
such a, an unimaginable scene, something that, as he said, that, that captured, captures the attention and draws the hearts in, yet it does not even match the mercy that Allah has for his creation. The Prophet ﷺ says in an authentic hadith, he says, لَمَّا قَضَى اللَّهُ الْخَلْقَ كَتَبَ عِنْدَهُ فَوْقَ الْعَرْشِ إِنَّ رَحْمَتِي سَبَقَتْ غَضَبِي When Allah decreed the creation, when Allah put together the destiny of the creation, Allah wrote with him above the throne, My mercy overcomes my anger. My mercy precedes and, and comes first before my anger. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all recite when we pray in Surah Al-Fatiha, every rak'ah we say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The compassionate, the most merciful. And we are referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a fact. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as an extension of the hadith I just reported where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote that my mercy comes before my anger, or my mercy overcomes and supersedes my anger and my wrath. The Prophet sallallahu says that Allah will forgive or if the ولو علم الكافر ما عند الله عز وجل من الرحمة لكان له أمل في الجنة أو لرجاء أن يدخل الجنة that if a disbeliever on the day of judgment gets to know the mercy that Allah truly has or the extent of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this kafir, this disbeliever, this criminal would have hope that he or she would enter paradise that's how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so what is it with us humans that things happen in our lives, but we don't see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We actually, we seem to have a consensus or agreement that life is tough. That we don't see signs of mercy in the world around us. Well, the reality is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah answers that question before we even ask it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شيء. And my mercy has engulfed, has covered, has showered, Everything. So everything you see, everything you touch, everything, every, everything you feel is saturated, is soaked in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is it in our personal experience we don't feel that? Why we, we, we don't really feel so well taken care of? Why don't we feel that the mercy is flooding towards us? That we are shrouded in mercy, we are wallowing in an ocean of mercy. Why, don't, why doesn't that reflect on our experience? Because it's a fact that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supersedes his anger and his punishment. And it overcomes it and it outweighs it. And that everything is soaked in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole universe is filled with the mercy of Allah. There's, there's, there's no cubic centimeter or millimeter in this world except that is, it, is, it is full and saturated with, the, with, the, with divine mercy. It's not your mercy or my mercy when we are kind and compassionate. It's not even the mercy of a mother that is so compassionate to her own child. That is divine mercy. That is, that there's no comparison to that. So why is it that we are not experiencing that? Why is it that we are not feeling that? It's because we're not looking. We don't see it with our eyes, but we can't see it with our eyes. We can only feel it in our hearts. But our hearts are not paying attention. We take things for granted. We're looking at the wrong things in life. We're so fixated on things that we don't like. Things that don't happen according to our desires, according to our expectations, according to our plans. And when things don't coincide with our plans, automatically we label them as evil, bad, painful, inconvenient. And we think it's a negative thing. But actually nothing comes from Allah but mercy. But the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, comes wrapped in different things. Sometimes it's wrapped in pain. Why? Because that pain is necessary. 
And that is the extent of the mercy of Allah, that even painful, painful things, deep inside of them, there is way more mercy than there is pain. And we know sometimes that a good parent or a good teacher or a good mentor sometimes might even let their student or their, or, their, or, their, or their child go through some hardship, allow them to experience the pain. Why? Because it's necessary for their transition, for the next step in their growth. Yet, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want everything to be convenient. We set ourselves as the, as the judge, as the ultimate judge, that it has to feel good in order for it to be truly good. And we sort of place a condition on Allah. And when we are busy with all of that, we are busy, you know, wanting and desiring the world to be what we want it to be and what we expect it to be. We miss the mercy that is all around us and everything. Even on the day of judgment, there will be so much mercy, more than the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another hadith the Prophet said that the, Allah would display so much mercy on the day of judgment that even shaitan would develop and entertain a hope that he would enter paradise. Shaitan himself. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if in our personal experience we're not feeling that love, we're not enjoying that love, we're not basking in the beauty of that compassion and that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we're not looking properly. Then we're not paying attention. It's just like when we, we take things for granted. We, we feel entitled. We feel that we are in a position to set the terms. And with all of that arrogance, we miss out on the beauty of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We evade it. We dodge it. We push it to the side. And we say no to it. Why? Because we insist that things should be the way we want them to be. So all we, all we need to do to experience that mercy and that bliss from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to open up to it. Is to humble ourselves. Put yourself down. And remember that the one who sets the terms is Allah. And that there is nothing wrong with planning. There is nothing wrong with having goals in life. There is nothing wrong with putting together some action plans and executing them. But without attachment to the outcome. Because you are supposed to do what you can do. And you are supposed to make the best choices in this life. But there is no guarantee that what you do or the plans that you put together will pay off the way you want. All you do is make yourself available to the qadr of Allah, to the word of Allah, and then Allah makes the final decision. In a sense, you are just like a, you're like a, a crayon or a pen with which, or you're a brush with which Allah paints. And thus Allah animates the creation. And Allah can choose whatever pen to write with, whatever brush to paint with. And it's not up to you. All you have to do is to make yourself available. Do what you are supposed to do. And then surrender. Open up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this, whatever happens in life, if you develop that keenness inside and that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will automatically start searching for the mercy of Allah in every occurrence, no matter how painful or inconvenient it is. And then you would have awakened the sight that Allah granted you in your heart. And you would be able to see beyond physical form, beyond the obvious uh, presence or beyond the, the obvious shape of things. You see beyond that, you penetrate. And you would see that in every situation, Allah is so merciful. And Imam Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, لَوْ كَشَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْ عَيْنَيْ عَبْدِهِ غِطَاءَ الْغَيْبِ فَيَرَى مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَوْ كَانَ كَيْفَ كَانَ يَكُونْ لَذَابَ قَلْبُهُ حَيَاءً مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أو لَذَابَ وَجْهُهُ حَيَاءً مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to reveal all other options, all other counterfactual realities, things that did not happen, could possibly happen, but they did not happen. 
If Allah were to reveal that to a human being, the heart of that person would melt out of shyness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they would realize that Allah made the best choices ever for them and that they accuse Allah, that we accuse Allah in our hearts of not giving, up, giving us the best. And the way this translates and manifests is when we look at other people and say, why can't I get what this person has? Maybe this person has some finances that you don't have. You say, why can't I, can't I be in, in such a similar situation? Or this person had richer parents or had a better wife, right? Or a better husband or more obedient, righteous children. You say, why can't I just be like this person? Why wasn't I in the position of this person? You're wishing for something you know nothing about when Allah has already given you the best choice ever. The best of all options ever, Allah gave you the best. And you, it's not only you're not thankful, but you're also resentful about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought into your life. Why? Because you trust your thinking and your desires more than you trust the wisdom, the mercy, and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we have a lot of pain inside. We live with that pain. It defines our life. And then we think it's circumstances that make us miserable. But we don't realize it's our response, our appreciation, our understanding, our resistance to the beautiful gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we don't bother unwrapping them and seeing out or bringing out the best that is in them, the treasures that are in them, the mercy that is latent in each of these gifts. Because nothing comes from Allah except that which is good. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعده. So at a deeper level, the world that we live in, the circumstances. in which or within which we are moving around in our life, all of those are gifts. All of them are manifestations of the divine mercy of Allah. But they come in different disguises. And we should not stop at the level of the wrapping of these gifts. We should welcome them and not judge them, not be quick. We are so impatient. that we, are, we jump to judge something or a gift by its wrapping. Not giving ourselves the opportunity to unpack it, to trust that nothing comes from Allah except that which is best. We are very quick to judge it, to take, on, take up an attitude against it, and then start resisting the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after we have labeled them as negative and bad and that other people were more fortunate. And that's why all of these term, this, this terminology that we use, less fortunate, that's inaccurate. That's, that's as, as in the Arabic language, that's su'u adabin ma'allahi azza wa jal. This is actually not good manners with Allah. This is not using good etiquettes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because nothing comes from Allah except that which is good. Allah says, مَا أَصَابَكَ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Any good that comes to you is from Allah. وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ And any evil that touches you comes from yourself. And many of the scholars, when they commented on this, they said, the way you receive Allah's gifts is negative and that's the evil that comes from yourself. So a pain, loss, a blessing, a gift, All of that is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only if we are able to see with our hearts. And when we Muslims live like that, we have nothing to lose. We have everything. You know, we have the whole world you know, to benefit from. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of us. In every turn, in every step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making everything work for us. Not because we are so important and we are so special, Just because that's how Allah created the creation. But it rests with us either to open up to that and have it flow into our lives or to resist it, reject it, and reflect resentment 
and rejection towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what a painful, ungrateful life really is. Any conditions you are in are a gift from Allah. And in order for you to see that, you have to trust. Unless you trust, you won't see it. Because we're too busy judging a situation and that's blinding us to the truth. And you can see that in your relationship with people. If there is something you hate about a person and you develop a negative, negative attitude to them, you will be blinded to the good traits and things that this person possesses. And when you develop a liking towards a person, you will be blinded to all their mistakes and their shortcomings. That's human bias. That's the bias of our brain. So when you are so busy judging what comes to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finding words and expressions to show how bad and evil it is, meanwhile you are missing all the blessings that are flooding towards you. And then we like to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our conditions. We like to feel we are a victim. We like to feel that Allah has shortchanged us. And all of that is ingratitude. All of that is rudeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nothing really harms Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that comes back to us. So let's be trusting of Allah. Let's look for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every situation and everything that happens in our life. Even if we cannot specify it, a general trusting and acceptance is all we need. And then you will see that nothing comes from Allah except that which is good. And that's why the, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ narrated a hadith, divine hadith, hadith Qudusi, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari where Allah says, Ana abdi bi abdi bi ma sha. I am to my servant as my servant thinks of me. So let my servant think of me whatever they want. So when you trust Allah and you think Allah takes care of you, that would be the reality. But that's reality. But when you mistrust Allah and when you do not trust Allah and fail to surrender, you're accusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eventually, you don't make use of all of those blessings and all of that mercy that is coming your way. And thus the hadith, this divine statement becomes true. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us acceptance, surrender, and to connect us to his mercy and help us appreciate it and be thankful and grateful for it. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه أهل معصيتك ويعمل فيه بكتابك وسنة نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين